Hi, this is Russ Anderson. Before we get to our final assembly, we're going to get in one other section here, which concerns one layer that I've added in. And you see that I've created a tracker mesh using a bunch of trackers on a little mountain that's sitting out in the background. And the idea is just to put the word synthize up there and have it sitting in the background. But when this got rendered out, it looked a bit floaty. If you look at it up close here, you, you can see that there's a little stuff going on. But ultimately, the issue is that the 360 VR images you know, are being built from multiple cameras. And those cameras, you know, in this case, that we've got the nice footage from 360 Heroes, the cameras in their rigs are GoPros. And you know, they have spherical lenses and also their CMOS cameras, so they have rolling shutter effects going on. Just to throw in an extra little wrinkle, they're not synchronized either. So there are a bunch of camera-related factors here that make these images much less rigid than a normal image from just a single camera. And in fact, here you can actually see some jello effects due to the vibration in this aerial environment as well. So we need to have the entire image here to be able to generate the 3D information from you know the local small portion of the image, but we want to have the image stick using that local part of the image as a reference. So to do that, we have a, a little script to help out. And that's what this, tu this tutorial section is really about. So we're going to go over to the trackers panel. And you can see I've got the one tracker uh, selected there. And let me just turn off or turn on pan to follow. And, and that's a five key there. And you can see now as I scrub through the shot, it's just staying right on the tracker. And you can see that the actual saw 3D location and in fact the whole mesh itself, you know, is bouncing around a little. If you look carefully as I scrub through it, you actually see some of the other parts of the image here are doing other different things. And that's those effects that I was mentioning. So my thought here is, well, can I just make this whole mesh be exactly nailed in place at least at one spot? And the answer to that, of course, is yes. And to do that, I have a little script. And you know, you see over here, this is the per frame R, uh, F colon, and then there's the R on each individual frame. That's the distance between the position of the 2D tracker and the 3D tracker. So when I run this script, let's perfect some trackers, then it's gone and basically zeroed out that error, not only just on this frame, but as I scrub through here, you see that it's on all of the frames. So we've precisely lined up the 2D and 3D trackers. And to achieve that, what it's done is re-aim the camera just a tiny, tiny smidge on each frame so that at least this one tracker is perfectly positioned between the 3D mesh itself and the, the 2D tracker. So, you know, this is a great thing to do if you have a lot of confidence in your 2D tracker and you want to make the whole 3D model follow along with it. And that's what we've got here. And so the rest of the image is, is doing its own other little things. But, it, and, you know, we've got this one mesh here that's, that's basically now anchored at that one location throughout the entire length of the shot. So these other spots may be moving a little bit more. They're further away, and their local portion of the image may be doing something different. In fact, sometimes there's a seam that comes right through here and kind of moves around. So it, it gives you what we're looking for, that you get to use the entire image to generate the 3D solution for what we have, but still, for jitter reduction purposes, 
use the 2D position of some particular tracker as a reference just in that area. And in fact, you can select maybe a couple of trackers if you want and have it average over those trackers. But if you're doing that, you want to make sure that those trackers are actually pretty close to one another so that they're all behaving the same way. So this process is applicable not to just 360 VR, but to regular shots as well if they are subject to the rolling shutter effect or uncorrected distortion problems. If you've got a, a decent, you know, regular camera shot, then you probably don't want to be doing this because then you're, you're taking the error, the jitter in that one camera and applying that to the entire mesh and you can wind up making the situation worse, not better. This is only a good idea when the error on the one tracker is much smaller than the other stuff that's going on due to, due to the rest of the image shifting around. So in my overall sequence of tutorials here, you know, this is a intermediate stage for this one layer. And from here, this just gets sent out to Blender for rendering. And then it gets converted back to a full 360 VR format for the final compositing that we'll see next.